Welcome back to Rarebus Photos. I wanted to kind of take you all to a different setting uh, for this next reading. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Tennessee. As you can see, got some beautiful trees around me. The air smells nice and clean. Uh, yes, there were some cars driving by, and there's a golf course over there that I usually play golf at. But, uh, you know, um, we have a lot of reading to do for Child Bride as well as From Here to the Great Unknown. And, um, yeah, I could have taken y'all deeper into the forest, and maybe I should have, but it's pretty here, and I have a bench that uh, looks like it could fall through and kill me. But it's holding me. <laughs> uh, thanks to those that just sent me some super thanks. Uh, right here on the side, you'll see who it is. I believe it's Swan Doll is one of them that just came through. Um, and uh, not necessary, but, you know, it, it helps. I mean, gosh, you know, it's really nice whether it's $2 or $1.99 or $0.99 or four ninety nine, dollars or I've seen fourteen ninety nine come through. Um, all of this helps me. And, you know, and it, it's one of those things where what I love, what I love to, uh, I mean, it feels like I'm already doing it full time, doesn't it? I spend a lot of time uh, late in the evening, early in the mornings, uh, reading to y'all and doing some research for some other stuff. It almost feels like I'm doing this full time, uh, but I do have a full time job and, and spend a lot of time with it um, and family time. So let's get to reading um, Child Bride, The Untold Story of Priscilla Bayou Presley Babalu. Um, we've got we're, we're at some very interesting points here. Yeah, to, to give you a recap, now first off, you can click on Rarebus Photos, the name below the video, and then you go to Playlist, and you'll see a playlist for Child Bride. It's usually an order of date that I put the put the uh, the video out, so you can watch an order. But to give you a recap, you know, there is a gentleman named Curry Grant that states that Priscilla slept with him. At 14, my goodness, once again, you know, there's no good character for, for Curry Grant on that. But slept with him at 14, uh, trading that for an introduction to meet Elvis. Um, not only that, she asked for, you know, well, he agreed to tell her everything that she would need to know in order to get Elvis to like her. Um, and then Suzanne Finstead, who is an attorney, researched all of the eyewitnesses that were around there, people that Priscilla went to school with. And, um, you know, and we, we find out other things, that she had other lovers and boyfriends. And her story about being a virgin on the, on the night of the wedding with Elvis, you know, it's not true according to Suzanne Finstead. Now, Priscilla, Bridezilla, Prissy, uh, some people call her Pissy, uh, never sued Suzanne, but it's like because I guess she couldn't. And, and Priscilla even sat down with Suzanne, thinking this was going to be a good book on her. And I think Suzanne wanted it to be a good book because, because as you read from the beginning, it seems like she has some adoration for Priscilla. And as we get further and further in the book, and more and more interviews happen uh, with people that were around uh, Priscilla, we find out that uh, it's not... It's not a very accurate portrayal. Elvis and me was not a very accurate portrayal of Priscilla and her time waiting for Elvis. So without further ado, let's uh, let's find out where we're at here and we'll start the reading. Um, so some of the chapter's names, just uh, as I go through these here. Some of the chapter's names are Anne's Story, The Secrets Begin, Priscilla, Little Girl Lost, Fantasies of Elvis, Stage Mother, Secrets Revealed, Sex Pot, The Myth and Unravels of Fosgy and Bargain, Imagine If the Fantasy Comes True, Priscilla in Wonderland, A Question of Virginity, Dark Fairy Tale, Sex and Rock and Roll, Two Time in Elvis, Family Skeletons, and then Baby Doll. Now, we have gotten through Family Skeletons, uh, almost, almost all of it, maybe all of it, so that's where we're going to go. And then Baby Doll is Chapter 17. So, let's see. What I like to do is take a look here. Let's see. She was really afraid. Okay. All right. All right. So Ronnie was was uh, was a uh, Priscilla's close friend. Uh, this is where we left off. Okay. All right. So we talked about Captain Bayou Babalu. Whatever he was, had pictures. He showed them to my parents and the people 
they would get together with downstairs and he'd talk about it a lot too, Margaret Iverson Ramos. And Connecticut cousin had the same impression. Paul, she observed when she met him, always wanted to be somebody important. Serving as Priscilla's connection to Elvis was his claim of fame. All right, so Ronnie, who was Priscilla's close friend, let me back this up a little bit so y'all can see, and downstairs neighbor for the Beaulieu's three remaining years in Wiesbaden, and had abundant opportunity to observe the family dynamics, which she found strange. Paul especially disturbed her. I was never comfortable around him, she admitted. Priscilla, Ronnie said, was afraid of him. That was real evident. She was absolutely panicked. Now, what is that a sign of? Physical abuse or potential SA? Uh, perhaps SUNY Ernst had correctly surmised that Priscilla dated Elvis to escape from something at home, for Ronnie remembered that Priscilla seemed desperate to avoid her stepfather. I just know what you sense as a person, Ronnie said. She was definitely afraid of him. She'd have to babysit a lot, and that was usually when she would ask me up and we'd talk. She'd say little things. Ronnie's father had a similar foreboding about Paul, occasionally mentioning to Ronnie that he was a strange man. Both the Bayous, Babalus, by her, re her recollection, drank quite a bit. And, she commented, was such a pretty lady, and he was not a good-looking man. Ronnie noticed the unusually tight bond be between Scylla and her mother. Let's get some beautiful trees in the background for y'all. Priscilla worshipped Anne, and Anne... Ronnie felt genuinely one of the best for Priscilla. Priscilla told me about her mother. She loved her mother. I liked Dan, but her mother was quiet. I really think she was afraid of Paul, too. Ronnie's little sister and Priscilla's younger sister, Michelle, were also best friends and were the same age. So the two younger girls spent much time together, often spending the night at each other's houses. Anne had a black eye one time, recalled Ronnie, and Michelle told my little sister, My daddy hits my mommy. Ronnie didn't know whether to believe Michelle, since the girls were just little twerps of seven or so, but the child's story was consistent with Ronnie's intuitive discomfort around Priscilla's father. Might this have been another dark secret that Anne and Priscilla shared, an unspoken element of the symbiotic bond, that Paul abused Anne and possibly Priscilla too? If this was true, it would explain Anne's almost hysterical fear of revealing to anyone Jimmy Wagner's existence we get a little flying bug there so let's talk about that for a second um what we know according to, to suzanne finstan's research right here is priscilla was deathly afraid of paul uh we know that paul made moves on young teenage girls that were around the house that were friends with priscilla uh or babysitters and then at the party with elvis that Paul put his hand between, I, I want to think it's Curry Grant or uh, one of the other guys that were there, wives or girlfriends, and she jumped up. He apologized later on. So the guy seems like he was an abuser physically and possibly, you know, possibly sexually. So what a beautiful day. I, I really, really hope you're enjoying this. I hope you've got something like this around you. Go sit outside on a bench. Take 30 minutes. Watch the cars go by. Listen to the birds. Read a book. Or maybe sit outside and listen to me reading a book. And you don't even have to uh, to, to see this. Um, let's get back to the story. Okay. So the, the bees, the boyus, the babaloos, were frozen in a web of fear and denial. And forced to eradicate all traces of her first husband, the handsome, endearing father of her precious child, Priscilla, deprived of her identity and a relationship with her grandparents and uncle, pressured into harboring dark family secrets. Her half-siblings kept in the dark about their sister's background and their mother's past. Paul had bullied them into enacting a charade to gratify his weak, little weak masculine ego. And they existed in an atmosphere of fear and repression. It was the irony of ironies that the fame and glory Priscilla's stepfather so coveted and finally achieved vicariously sprang from Jimmy Wagner, though the daughter Paul was so keen to call his own. Uh, now, Anne Bayou, like Paul, turned to alcohol as one way to numb her senses, as a buffer between herself and reality. Did that reality include abuse? Well, that's what the little girls said that Paul hit their mommy. So, little girls don't lie. Little kids don't lie when they're t telling a stranger something. They're trying to get the horrible reality of what they witnessed, usually, out in the open. You know, they don't have a filter. 
At the time, all he knew was that Paul was creepy and I didn't like being around him, Ronnie remembered. I really think that's what my daddy was trying to tell me about this man. There's something wrong with this guy, Ronnie, but it was never said to me. I never saw it. Priscilla really held her emotions in check. She was always in command of everything. If she was hurting or upset, you were never totally aware of it. Not by, by words, at least, anyways. If there was abuse in the Bayou household, confirmation of his existence would never come from Priscilla's lips. Yet, her behavior did raise flag. Mike, uh, flags. Mike Stone found it odd that Priscilla never really talked about her childhood. And it was always kind of a mystery. Um... And I don't know why that was, because we talked about my childhood, obviously, and there were a lot of things I wanted to share that I didn't want to hide. But for whatever reason she had, she rarely talked about her childhood at all. When Priscilla did speak of Paul, uh, she rarely talked about, so sorry, when Priscilla did speak about Paul, once she was famous, she lionized him, writing in her memoir of my strong, handsome father, who was the center of our world. Hmm. Doesn't seem like everybody else's recollections, does it? Or recollections. Uh, ooh, is it windy? Look at that. Y'all might be hearing the wind. Hopefully, this isn't disturbing your listening. I kind of feel like I have my hand cupped over the phone to maybe keep. But we, we're just going to finish this chapter out, and then uh, we'll read Baby Doll next time. So here we go. I lionized him into interviews about how wonderful he was. Classic compensate. Compensation, Compens- compensatory, compensatory behavior for someone who had been abused. Now that's true. Uh, or as Shakespeare writes in Hamlet, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> she was really afraid of him, Ronnie insisted. And I don't know if it was just because he was strict or what. This fear of Paul Boyou may have forged an even tighter bond be- between Priscilla and her mother, explaining why Anne was so permissive with Priscilla. Out of mingled guilt, love, and remorse over exposing Priscilla to a harsh home life and regret over her own lost love and may have allowed her daughter to do things other mothers would not have sanctioned. This may also have been why Priscilla viewed Elvis in her friend Debbie's estimation as sort of a haven, a sanctuary for a future. Mike Edwards saw the relationship with Elvis as something mystical that was placed in Priscilla's path as a means of escape from a troubled childhood. Other clues also pointed in this this direction, like, I never considered her all that happy, Ronnie analyzed, being as pretty as she was. You'd think, with all the rest of us looking at her in envy, well, what more could she want? You know, but she never really seemed all that happy to me. That's where we are going to finish up. Uh, The next chapter is going to be Baby Doll, and it looks like Priscilla's relationship with Tom Stewart turned turbulent that fall. So, lots of rebounds, lots of uh, potential uh, intimacy. I hope you've enjoyed this reading of Child Bride, the untold story of uh, Priscilla Bayou Presley by Rare of His Photos here, uh, Suzanne Finstead. Um, I was hopefully going to get to read some From Here to the Great Unknown, but it's a bit windy and I'm a little worried maybe that the sound is not going to come out good enough. So, uh, I will probably freeze a photo of this beautiful beautiful background so y'all can leave some comments uh after you've uh, digested what we just read and let me know what you think about where we're at in the book so far all right tcb tlc this is joe with rare with photos lisa was the sweetest girl her daddy loved her so Prissy took her to L.A., replaced Elvis with Mike Stone. Then she ran out of cash and sued the king of rock and roll. Made him sell his royalties and play show after show. She put Elvis in an early grave, then laughed upstairs at Graceland. At least that's what a witness said. When Prissy should have saved him Instead she drank poor Elvis And took Lisa Marie away Elvis fans, they don't forgive her To this very day Prissy B should lose the present Now that Lisa's gone She left us with her book 
Telling us all the prissy beat And Michael Edwards took Took her joy and took her dreams Took her innocence away And Prissy has the nerve to still get up on stage She put Elvis in an early grave Then laughed upstairs at Graceland At least that's what a witness said When Prissy should have saved him Instead she drank poor Elvis and took Lisa Marie away Elvis fans, they don't forgive her to this very day Prissy B should lose the Prissy name Now that Lisa's gone She left us with her book Telling us all that Prissy B And Michael Edwards took Took her joy and took her dreams Took her innocence away And Prissy has the nerve to still get up on stage She put Elvis in an early grave Then laughed upstairs at Graceland At least that's what a witness said When Prissy should have saved him Instead she trained for Elvis and took Lisa Marie away Elvis fans, they don't forgive her to this very day Prissy B should lose the Prissy A Prissy B should lose the Prissy A Look forward to the next video of From Here to the Great Unknown later on this afternoon. This is Rarest Photos TCB TLC. Till next time.